Hi guys, welcome to this Highs tutorial. We're going to carry on looking at the interface designer and we're going to start by looking at this widget list on the left hand side. So the widget list shows all the controls on your interface in a tree structure hierarchy. So we start with the root, that's the lowest part, and then we have the controls listed that are on the interface. Let's add another control to our interface. We're going to right click and add a panel. Now panels are very powerful controls and we will be exploring these a lot more as we go through these videos. But one of the main purposes is they can be used as a container for other controls. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to take this panel and I'm just going to drag and move it up under the root. And then I'm going to select all of these buttons and I'm going to drag them up and put them inside the panel. Now if you watch the green line under the panel and the green square around the panel, it will indicate where the controls are being dragged to. So if I have it here, you can see that the root is highlighted and the green line is under the panel. So that's saying these controls are going to be put in the root as the main container and under the panel, which is where they currently are. But if I drag up a little bit more, it's now highlighting the panel and the green line has been indented to indicate that these controls are going to become children of the panel. So now all these controls are contained within the panel and if I move the panel around the controls go with it. You'll also notice that you can no longer see all of the controls. That's because when controls are inside a panel or other parent container, their X and Y coordinates become zeroed to the parent. So for example, if I take this button one and I set it to zero, zero, you can see that that position is the edge of the panel. So the button is a child of the panel and the panel is a child of the root. And the root is just the whole canvas. So if I set the panel to zero, zero, that goes to the edge of the canvas. You can place panels inside panels and stack more controls inside them. And this tree can go on and on. If I duplicate this panel, I'm just going to press control D. We can have another panel. And we could put this panel inside the first panel. This is not going to look pretty, but it'll just demonstrate it. So the panel is actually outside of the view of our initial panel. But if I click on it here, we can see it's over here. I can drag it into view. And now if I move the first panel around, both panels move together. So things are getting quite messy now. So I'm just going to pull that second, second panel out. So we'll get it back in the root again. There we go. One important point is when duplicating a panel full of controls, even the controls inside the new panel will have a unique ID assigned automatically by highs. This is to stop any ID clashes. So that's a really handy automated feature, but generally you'll probably be wanting to name your controls manually to give them more meaningful names. Another useful feature of the widget list is we can search for controls. So when you have lots of controls, it's handy to be able to just type in the name of a control you're looking for and it will be displayed. And then you could select it, edit its properties or move it around or link it to some parameter in the rest of your project. Next to each control, you can see there's either a green or a red circle. This indicates whether or not the save in preset button is enabled. So for the panel, it's red. That's because the save in preset button is disabled. If we enable it, the circle turns green. I'm just going to click off so you can see that a little better. And for the buttons, it's already green because they're already set to save in preset, but we could turn them red by disabling that property. When you have lots of controls and you want to focus on a particular subset, it can be handy to hide some of these controls. Now you can do that by searching if you have just one or two controls that share part of their name in common, or you can fold up part of the tree. And you can do that by clicking these triangles here and that will hide selections of controls, just revealing the ones you want to see. 
Not only does the tree view represent a parent-child hierarchy, it also represents the Z depth of the controls or the Z position. So some controls need to go in front of other controls. For example, let's take button one and let's move it over button two. As you can see, button one goes behind button two because it is lower down or closer to the root of the hierarchy. If I now move it down below button two, it's now higher up in the tree, so it's above button two. Button one is now on top of button two. Okay, that was a quick look at the widget list in the Hives Interface Designer. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below the video on YouTube. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.